The Magic School Bus on the Ocean Floor by Joanna Cole, illustrated by Bruce Deegan. It was the end of the day, and it was hot in school. We had been working for hours on our ocean science projects. All our work made Miss Frizzle very happy, but it made us very hot and tired. We were putting the finishing touches on a display about how ocean animals swim when someone said, I wish we could go swimming. Miss Frizzle looked up. Without warning, she said, As a matter of fact, children, I've been planning a class trip to the ocean for tomorrow. Everybody cheered. Sometimes having a weird teacher isn't so bad. The next day, everyone showed up in a bathing suit. We boarded the old school bus, and, Mi and Frizzy started the engine. We were ready for a day of fun in the sun. When we finally came to the beach, we wanted to jump off the bus. But guess what? Miss Frizzle didn't stop. She kept right on going, past the lifeguard station, across the sand, and down to the water's edge. We are now in the intertidal zone, said Miss Frizzle. That is the part of the shore that is covered with water at high tide and uncovered at low tide. Out the windows we saw tide pools, puddles of water left on shore when the tide goes out. We were hoping the Frizz would let us out, but no such luck. She kept driving at full speed ahead. As the bus splashed through the waves, the lifeguard blew his whistle. Frizzy didn't stop, so she, he kept he came running out to rescue us. Suddenly, a mysterious wave rose up. Miss Frizzle opened the door of the bus, and the lifeguard was swept inside. Outside the windows, we saw nothing but rushing water. We screamed and closed our eyes. When we finally opened our eyes, everything was quiet. We were under the ocean, and there had been a few small changes. The bus had turned into a submarine, and everyone was wearing a diving suit. We should have known. It was another one of Miss Frizzle's crazy class trips. Right away, Miss Frizzle started talking about the ocean. We are now passing over the continental shelf, she said. That's the area that stretches from the shore to where the water is 400 to 600 feet deep. Miss Frizzle decided this was a good moment for us to get out of the bus. Thank goodness we had air tanks. All around us were fish, fish, and more fish. Many kinds of fish swim in large groups called schools, Miss Frizzle said. Down below, on the muddy bottom, lobsters were catching crabs. Starfish used their arms to pry open clamshells, and jellyfish floated past, catching small fish with their stinging tentacles. The ocean was teeming with life. Miss Frizzle said that there was life in the water. We couldn't see. She pulled out a microscope and made us look at seawater. Under the microscope, we saw strange creatures. Girls and boys, said Miss Frizzle, these tiny living things are called plankton. We tried to listen, but we felt nervous. We noticed some dark shapes coming closer and closer. Oh no! The shapes were tiger sharks! Miss Frizzle told us not to worry. She said that most sharks will not eat people. The number of people killed by sharks each year is very, very small, said Miss Frizzle. We panicked anyway. Then an enormous whale shark slid by. Whale sharks never hurt people. They eat nothing but plankton, said Miss Frizzle. The giant sharks swam down, and we went along. We were leaving the continental shelf, following a steep cliff called the Continental Slope. We were on our way down to the deep ocean floor. After a while, the whale shark swam away, but the frizz kept going down. The water was bitter cold and pitch dark. Sunlight could not shine so deep. Miss Frizzle switched on her flashlight. As we swam onto the bus, we had noticed that it had changed again. This time it was a submersible, 
a vehicle made for exploring the deep ocean floor. The pressure down here would crush an ordinary submarine, Frizzy explained, and she drove all the way to the bottom. There is not enough food here for large animals, Miss Frizzle told us. Most deep-sea fish are tiny. The deep ocean floor was as empty as an underwater desert. Then, up ahead, we saw a spot that was full of life. It looked like an undersea garden with all kinds of strange animals in it. This is a hot water vent, class, said the frizz. A vent is an opening in the ocean floor. Flowing from the vent is super hot water mixed with hydrogen sulfuric gas. Miss Frizzle said that there were other vents on the ocean floor. Unfortunately, we don't have time to visit them, she added. Then she pulled up a lever on the dashboard, and the bus zoomed toward the surface. Soon we were motoring over the open ocean toward a sun-drenched island. The bus had changed into a glass-bottomed boat. Through the glass, we saw what looked like a wall made of colorful rocks. Miss Frizzle said that it was a coral reef, made of tiny animals called coral polyps. We, drew, we drove overboard and began to explore. The reef was made of tiny different kinds of coral. Some looked like trees with branches. Others looked like fans or fingers. Some even looked like human brains. A coral reef makes a good home for many ocean plants and animals, said the frizz. We saw crabs and lobsters, huge eels and octopuses, slimy sea slugs and spiny sea urchins, and the most colorful fish in the world. Too soon, Miss Frizzle said that it was time to go. No one wanted to be left behind, so we all climbed aboard. Frizzy stepped on the gas, and the bus chugged away from the coral reef. Nearby, a school of dolphins leaped past. In the distance, we saw a whale. Everything seemed normal. Then we noticed something weird was happening. The bus was getting flat. As usual, Miss Frizzle was the only one who stayed calm. She drove us to an ocean current, and we were swept along in the fast-moving water for thousands of miles. After a while, we saw our beach again. Everyone stay on the bus, shouted the frizz. On the bus was right. It had turned into a giant surfboard. We had to stand on top of it, and we were riding a wild wave straight toward shore. Oh no, it was a giant wipeout. The whole class went under. The next thing we knew, we were washing up on the sand. Our driving suits were our diving suits were gone, and the bus was its old self again. There was no, there, what, there it was, sitting in the parking lot, as if nothing had happened. We thanked Lenny for everything and hit the road. Back in our classroom, we made a terrific chart of the ocean for the bulletin board. By then, we were definitely ready to go home. Thank goodness it was Friday. After that class trip, we really needed a weekend off.